From the bustling streets of Bangkok to the jaw-dropping islands of the south, this itinerary has everything you need to be able to explore Thailand in just two weeks. And trust me, you don't want to miss what's coming. Hi everyone, welcome back to our channel. My name is Alba. And I'm Nas, and I used to live in Thailand. I lived there for about six months, which gave me the opportunity to explore the whole country with Alba. And just this year, we were lucky enough to visit again. So spending all this time in Thailand has allowed us to put together the perfect two-week itinerary so that you can make the most of the country. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. Let's get started. Day one, you arrive in Thailand. We really recommend you to fly to Bangkok. The international airport is huge. There's a lot of connections from the rest of the country from there. And what you want to do is arrive in Bangkok and stay in a central location, close to some of the places that you'll want to see. The city of Bangkok is huge. So it's really, really important that you stay in this area to make the most of your time. But it's your first day, so you're tired. Get some rest, have yummy dinner and get ready for a full day of exploring. And that takes us to day two and three. Realistically, it is very hard to see Bangkok in less than two days. Why? Because there's a lot to see in different parts of the city. And that's why you're going to spend at least day two and three exploring this amazing city. Now, make sure to subscribe because our next video is going to be a full travel guide for Bangkok. But for now, we're going to tell you the places that you cannot miss during these two days. One of them is the Grand Palace and right next to it, well, at least a walking distance, there's Watarun, which is my favorite temple in the whole of Bangkok. This is so beautiful and it will probably take up a whole morning for you. We actually did it recently when we were there this year and we did a vlog about it. So go check that out if you want to know a little bit more about the rules for entering the palace and how much it costs and so on. But that's definitely going to be the first landmark that you want to hit. Then you also want to make sure you hit a Khao San Road. That's where people eat the crazy scorpions and go party. You can also go there for dinner. So definitely leave this activity for the night because it's when the street gets the most activity. And just giving a shout out to two more places. One of them is Lumpini Park. It is essentially the equivalent of Central Park of New York in Bangkok. We love this park especially because there's these huge lizards all over and they're free to do whatever. It's pretty amusing to see them just roaming around so go check it out and one of my favorite places that you cannot miss is Chatuchak Market. This place is huge and you need to save a lot of time to go see it because you're just gonna spend a lot of time roaming around the market buying souvenirs for your family and something to be aware of is that i think it's only open on the weekends oh good point but all of this information will come in our next video a full guide to exploring bangkok and as much as i wish we had more time in bangkok because it's one of our favorite cities in the world we have to move on to the next location and that's gonna be on day four. You're gonna go take a local plane and you're gonna fly to Chiang Mai. Chiang Mai is in the north of Thailand and it's absolutely one of the must visit destinations when you go to Thailand. Why? Because you get to experience the forest, the jungle, and people are used to going to the beach, but I really think the jungle is beautiful there's a lot of temples to visit there's also animal sanctuaries and even cooking classes are really famous on this part of thailand so those are going to be things that you're going to add to your itinerary on days five and six you're going to be exploring the whole area you're going to have time to book any activities that you wish to do but we highly recommend booking a one-day tour that's going to take you to all the key places that are not in the main town of course, the temples and restaurants that are in the main town, you can explore just walking, but those that are a little bit more on the outside in the mountains, if you book a one day tour, you'll be able to hit all the spots in one day. And you've probably seen videos and pictures of people bathing elephants in animal sanctuaries. This is probably the place where you can make that happen. Me and Alba did an excursion where we got to visit some villages. We saw a huge waterfall as well. And there's some tours locally that you can do to explore Chiang Mai even better. Day seven, you will want to get a flight from Chiang Mai directly to Phuket. You might have to do a stopover in Bangkok, but it doesn't really matter. You will want to go to Phuket. Now, when you get to Phuket, you have three options. You either stay in Phuket town, you then can stay in remote resorts because there's quite a bunch of them, or you can stay where 90% of people stay, which is near Patong. Patong has resorts, has hotels in re really touristy areas, and a lot of bars, restaurants, 
Uh, there's stuff, stuff going on all the time, so this is where we normally stay. This is probably one of the hottest spots in the whole of Thailand. In fact, I think there is international flights that go to Phuket for people to stay in Patong. Even though it is a little bit touristy, we think it's the best place to stay because from there you can access everything that you will need during your stay in Phuket. So then you're gonna spend days eight and nine enjoying this beautiful island. The beach is quite cool. It is not the best beach in the world, but you can take a tuk-tuk that takes you to other beaches that are more remote uh, around Phuket. You also have activities to do, there's tours, there's the Buddha at the top of the mountain that has amazing views. Once again, we recommend to book a one-day tour in one of those two days so that you can get to know all the popular spots, including all the temples that there are in the island. And you get to do that in just one day, learn all the culture, and you'll have an extra day to enjoy the beach. And of course, don't forget to party at night. Phuket <laughs> is famous for that. On day 10, you're gonna catch a ferry to go from Phuket to Koh Phi also a really famous island. Koh Phi Phi is our absolute favorite island in the whole of Thailand. Now, there's a number of reasons to why people like or dislike Koh Phi Phi, but here's a few things you need to know. One, there is no cars in the island. You have to walk pretty much everywhere, but it's quite small. Yeah. Two, the views are incredible. You can climb to the top of the island and you see these views. And three, you can access Maya Bay from here. Now, Maya Bay these days is quite overcrowded, we're not gonna lie, but it's still worth visiting. And how do you get to Koh Phi Phi? What you're gonna do is while you're in Phuket, you're gonna visit one of those tour stands and you're gonna book your transfer. Normally that includes the van that takes you all the way to the port because the ferry does not leave from Patong, it leaves from another spot in the island. And you're gonna take a couple hours, is it two hours or so? It's roughly two hours. Roughly two hours on the ferry uh, until you arrive to Koh Phi Phi. We recommend that you book this during the morning so then you have the afternoon in Koh Phi Phi to do the beautiful climb that Nas mentioned and get to see these incredible views. And of course, on that same day, make sure to book the tour to Maya Bay for the day after. We recommend you to book the half day tour, not the full day tour, even though you may think that it's actually cheaper to do the full day tour, uh, so that you can explore Maya Bay. And then in the afternoon, you can come, chill, go to the beach, watch the sunset. We did a vlog of our experience doing the tour, so you can go check it out. And in there, we also explain why we were so happy we booked the half day and not the full day <laughs> tour. So just go check that out if you'd like. But that will be the end of your time in Koh Phi Phi and we need to move on to the next spot. Day 12, book a trip to go to Krabi. You're gonna do the exact same you did in Phuket and you're gonna go to one of the stands in Koh Phi Phi, grab yourself a ticket and go right in the morning from Koh Phi Phi to Krabi. Krabi is also a beach town and you're gonna have the afternoon to explore, go to the beach, watch the sunset and walk around the town. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna prepare for the next day, which is gonna be day 13, to take a boat and go to Relay Beach. We really like Relay Beach. I mean, we were a little bit unlucky because it was rainy. <laughs> when uh, we visited. When we visited, but it's still a very beautiful beach. And you can only access by boat from Krabi. So this is gonna be your only opportunity to go there. It's basically like a remote location. You're gonna take a boat to get there. You're gonna enjoy the beach and you can also get to walk around. It's not an island, but walk around the treks that they have on there. So make sure to take uh, appropriate shoes for that. And you're probably gonna spend the day there, no? Yes, mostly. Ao Nang, which is the area of Krabi that we recommend you to visit and the area of Krabi where it's really close to Rayleigh Beach, has a lovely walk by the beach and it has a lot of restaurants, a lot of shops. There's a little market as well, so it's worth exploring it. There are also other tours you can do from Ao Nang, but going to Rayleigh is our favorite. It's important to note that you need to stay in Ao Nang to visit Relay Beach, so don't be confused and stay in Krabi Town because there's not that much to do there mm -hmm. and it's not that close, so remember Ao Nang to book your hotel. Day 14. The trip is coming to an end, unfortunately. You're gonna have to travel back from Krabi, most likely to Bangkok, and then you're gonna get your flight home from there. We could give you an itinerary of 21 
30 days to see Thailand because the reality is we left out Kopangan where the full moon party happens. We left out Koh Samui, Koh Tao, Koh Tao. <laughs> and so many other places but the reality is that there's only 14 days and we left out those destinations on purpose because they are hard to get to and you get a very similar experience by going to the places that we've mentioned here and you get to see the most locations in only two weeks so we hope you found that useful so that's gonna be everything in this 14 day travel itinerary across thailand let us know in the comments is there anything in specific you'd like to know about thailand because we have a lot more content coming out so make sure to subscribe and stay tuned for upcoming videos. Thank you guys so much for watching as always. Make sure to give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed. And I guess we'll see you in, in our, our next video. video.